I say, what you need done? He say, oh, I just need you to throw a brick in his window. I mean, the worst one we've probably done <laughs> was kidnap someone. Do you have like a plan, like when you won't do this anymore? Is there a certain amount of money you'll get to? I think about nine figs. And how close are you? Really far. <laughs> I mean, nine figs, that's a hundred million dollars. It's a few more years at least. This is Yuki. He's the creator of Brick Squad. Brick Squad is the front lines, you know. You can order, throw a Molotov at their house, get the house like shot up, even get the person who's in the house robbed. Just a bunch of other things. I started it as a side project and it's more like a supply to demand type of thing, you know? Like people really want to get back at their enemies online. So I just decided to hop in on it and be like, you know, why not? Like, why not? I'm sure you know that in the online space, getting threatened by some toxic teammates, friends, or even just some random people is not uncommon. And although it's the same in the world of cybercrime and sim swappers, you would never expect any of those threats to be real, right? Well, that wasn't the case for Patrick McGovern Allen, or Tongue, one of the creators and admins of the Violence as a Service Telegram, a business that offered the same services that Yuki does. He was arrested in Egg Harbor Township in New Jersey back in August while he was working at the restaurant A Touch of Italy. Now, Tongue was arrested in connection with a series of violent attacks including a shooting in Ohio and the firebombing of a home in New Jersey. Now if we take a look at the footage of the shooting that he did, we can hear him and his crew scream. Justin Active was here! Justin Active was here. Justin Active was here. And you might be wondering who Justin is. Well, he's another sim swapper that allegedly goes under the name Active or Foreshadow. He was targeted by Tung and his crew for allegedly stealing money from them. Now, is he in the video? No, because this job was done as some sort of threat or intimidation tactic against him. You see, this is just some random e-girl's house that's being shot right here, and she was apparently dating Justin at the time, and because the guy who wanted this job done likely couldn't get a hold of Justin's real address, he probably settled for the next best thing. Alright, now let's take a look at the firebombing. You can really see that the whole operation isn't very well put together. This guy has a bottle of MD-2020, which they've turned into a Molotov, and they're trying to light it with a blowtorch, and after the bottle bounced, bounces off the window and breaks up the front of the house, so they just run away. I mean, it was pretty obvious that these sorts of services wouldn't be the most professional. I mean, at the end of the day, Pat was filming himself burning buildings. And if that wasn't enough to convince you this guy was crazy, there's an article from 2020 where Tung reportedly crashed his 2007 Lexus into a building. Uh, I'm John Gotti. Uh, it's like my alias. Uh, nobody knows like my real name, obviously, so I'm not going to bring that out there. But uh... Did you know Patrick uh, McGovern Allen? His name was Tung? I did. I do. I do. I do. That's my boy. Uh, did you know him only virtually or did you know him, know him? Um, it is possible that we've encountered each other two or three times IRL. And what was he like? He was a chill dude. Uh, I don't, I don't really know how to explain the guy. He was, he was a bit off, but he was, I don't know, he was a chill dude. He was uh, honorable. Meaning if he said he was going to do something, he did it. Yeah. He did drive a car into a house. He did. He did. <laughs> it is what it is. Some people do things sometimes. They don't mean to, you know. Accidents happen. I mean, he crashed a car into a building for no reason. Just because he felt like it, so I mean... Pat was an idiot. He got caught. And that doesn't happen to people who are smart. I mean, you can be reckless and you can be smart and nothing will happen. But he was just reckless and didn't care about any of it. Well, you might think... This is where the story ends, right? The kids tried to harass Justin after he stole their money, they got caught because of bad operational security, and now that's it, right? Well, not exactly, because it turns out Justin wasn't as anonymous as he thought. And on the other side of the country, just a few days later, Justin would get kidnapped in Miami, Florida. From here, the attackers try to extort their money back out of him. But after it turns out he wasn't the one holding it, they decide to hold his life for ransom and depend on his friends to pay his debts. They record a video of him where Justin can be quoted saying, Yo, Dan, bro, please send the 200k. They're gonna kill me if you don't. I'll pay you back. Just let me know what you need. I got you. For real. Any work for free. Whatever. However long you need me to. I'll apply to any store you need me to apply to. I can be a plug. I don't care if I get caught by the cops or anything. I'll get that money back for you. I'm used to do that work. Now, what happens next isn't super clear, but from what I heard, the extorters got some money out of him, but not all of it. Justin wasn't killed, but he was shot in the leg and then let go. Now, shortly after he was let go, new messages popped up in popular SimSwapper telegrams, confirming everything rumored was true and that Justin was now working with the FBI. A SimSwapper named Gus confirmed he had ordered the hit on Justin because his group had held back some of his stolen funds, labeling Tongue as a snake and saying he just got what was coming for him. Now these aren't the only times attacks like these have happened, and they're getting more and more common. 
London has reported at least four separate incidents where muggers and gangs have extorted cryptocurrency from their victims. All of these attacks are great examples of stalking, and the amount stolen varies from £5,000 to £29,000. And one of these was attempted on Discoli, a very well-known member of the community, famous for leaking the OG users database back in 2020. What happened was three men jumped his fence and snuck around his property, one disguised as a policeman so fake that his neighbors ended up calling the police, which led to their arrest in a Volkswagen Golf just mere minutes away from the house. In the car, they found a baseball bat, a taser, and a fake firearm. Luckily, Discoli wasn't home when this happened, but he did say that he thinks the people that jumped his fence were trying to hit multiple people consecutively to extort crypto from them. Basically, the lesson of today's video is, don't keep crypto on your phone.